Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to the fourth edition of the uh, the Go for the Goldie podcast. And uh, this one I am very, very excited for. Um, we have Jay Thomas, who is an inline speed skater. And uh, the reason I'm so excited about this one is because I had no idea that this was even a thing until a couple days ago or a week, whenever the heck we started talking. So, Jay, yeah. welcome to the show today. Hey, good to be here. This is awesome. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time, especially since it is a Sunday, and I'm sure your time is valuable. But, um, you know, I have no some people, a lot of people that are very excited to talk to you about um, about this sport and uh, everything that you have going on with it. So um, to get started, I always kind of like to get um, kind of show a background as to how I came across, you know, you and how we became, you know, how we got in touch. And um, yeah. with my Twitch live stream, I'm on my bike all the time. People kind of drop in and I always kind of like to ask the question over there, you know, are you, do you race? Do you just like doing this, um, recreationally? And then I asked you, um, and, and, you know, to be honest, your, your handle got my attention, right? Pimp. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> and, uh, what, what's exactly your handle on Twitch? It's pimp laugh. There you it, go. It, <laughs> it's a long story, but it years ago I came up with a character named Pimp Left Scuff, and it, that's what it came from. So when I created a Twitch account, I couldn't think of any other thing, so I just put that in there. Well, it got my attention. So <laughs> <laughs> now it's turned into this funny thing that inside jokes and all that. So that's the best though when it's organic like that, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, yep. uh, so we said. So I asked him. You know, he was on the Twitch live stream, and I said, you know, Jay, what uh, what do you do? You know, why you ride? You know, you race. You doing it to stay in shape, or do you have any type of goals? And um, and and what what was your answer? Do you remember? Yeah, I, was, I think I said it was uh, cross training for inline speed skating. That's exactly what you said. Yeah. And then yeah. right off right off the bat, my head just. I had a bazillion questions like right off the bat. I'm like, <laughs> hold on, wait a minute, what? So, um, yeah, yeah. and then as we started to talk a little bit, you know, kind of, you know, back and forth, and obviously it's not a, the most efficient way of communication when you're, you know, I'm screaming at a computer while I'm on a bike and I don't even know the hell if you're listening or not, or if you're paying attention and, you know, you're typing. So, um, I told Jay, I said, you know, listen, man, I want to know a little about this as possible because I want to learn about this, you know, mm -hmm. on the show. If, if you'd be willing to come on the show, I'd love to hear about this. So, um, and then he dropped a, Dropped a tidbit that he didn't even get into it until he was 40 years old. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, about eight years ago. That's amazing. <laughs> 48. That's yeah. amazing. That's absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's why as soon as you said that, I'm like, you are exact. Because I didn't know if you were, you know, you could have been a 16-year-old kid just getting into it or something. But as soon as you said, you know, I got into this at 40, I'm like, you are exactly <laughs> the person that I need to talk to when people need to hear from um, regarding yeah, that like sport. Actually, it was, I started, I didn't compete till I was 40, but I started skating when I was like, like a few years before that. So maybe I was 35, maybe 36. Either way. That's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. So yeah. I want to get right into it here. Um, let's go, let's go back around first. Right. So okay. I'm sure that you competed in some kind of sport, you know, or something, some kind of athletics before the age of 35 or four, whenever you got into it. So oh, yeah. uh, let's hear about kind of your path. Uh, what Let's say, let's take take me up right until you got into online speed skating. You know, what's your history? Did you play high school, college, anything recreationally? Just kind of let's oh, yeah. hear the whole thing here. Yeah, you know, in high school, I, I played, uh, I did a couple of years of football. I, I ran track. I did cross country, uh, basketball. Um, then in college, uh I changed. I got, you know, I was kind of sick of like running sports and all that. I want to do something different. So uh, I got into cycling in college. I did two years of that. And then um, one, I did actually a duathlon in college once. Nice. <laughs> so running, running and biking. Yeah. yeah. I was, oh, oh, before I got to even um, high school, I was a, I was an age group swimmer. So I was a butterfly and freestyle guy um jay so that's I so have, funny you say that because friday uh friday i had a swimmer on the podcast and then yesterday i had a duathlete so how funny is that oh, no way. <laughs> you mentioned those you did two sports and those are the two guests i had previous to you so that's funny. yeah <laughs> it's a meaningful coincidence it that's... is that's right <laughs> 
So, uh, you know, in college I did two years of cycling. And then after that, I pretty much was flat for a while. Um, I didn't really do anything. And then I was what, 30, I was 2006, 2005. Um, I was married at the time. Um, I was pushing 238 pounds. I'm six one. Um, people thought, Hey, Jay, you look great. You going to the gym. I'm like, uh, no, I'm just sitting on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I started going to the gym with my wife at the time. And then I, I shed like 30, 40 pounds, stayed at 200. So then I got bored, you know, running on the treadmill is okay. Um, I, I was like, you know, I need something more for cardio. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so boring, you know, sitting on a treadmill, reading a book. Mm -hmm. um, so then I, I, I got this idea. I'm going to get my old inline skates out. I had in college. I'm going to, I'm going to skate because I think I had seen on TV uh, some of the Olympics and I thought the speed skaters look really cool, you know? <laughs> so I had no, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I could, could skate on anything that had a blade you know whether it was on ice or whether it was on wheels um so then i just i was like all right i want to try this and of course you know i, I it was kind of ugly i mean i <laughs> i didn't fall that much but, <laughs> but you know when you love something like it doesn't matter if you suck or not you just you just do it and it's fun so, so that, you had that was, skates that was in college thing. you had inline skates in college um mm -hmm. but you weren't like a real they were more recreational to get from point A to point B, maybe, you know, right. you know, skate with some chicks here and there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that happened. I wish it did. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So you really didn't have yeah. any. So when you, you know, decided that you needed something a little bit more for cardio, um, where was mm -hmm. the first place you went to kind of say, you know, I want to do maybe this, competitively or just a, a notch above, you know, just kind of going nowhere on a treadmill. Uh, with the first place I went skating, um, yeah. there's a, in Toledo here, there's a, there's a, there's a trail that starts at the university and it goes, it's like seven miles out and back. Okay. Well, one way. So, uh, I got on that and I just started noodling around, you know, I, I couldn't even get to the end when I first started. <laughs> so, and I, I remember like, well, this is when I was in, once when I was in college, I remember seeing this older guy just fly by me and he had his hands behind my back, uh, behind his back. And he just sailed by me like, I, like, you know, he was just like a, the best day of his life, you know? <laughs> so like, how did, how do you do that? So, you know, I always kept that in my head. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So then this was in college. So then I put the skates away for years and come back in 2006 and start messing with that again. And, uh, eventually I got, I got better. I, you know, after each skate, I was horribly sore because that works all your, your core muscles, mm -hmm. but I loved it. I was like, I want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so and, uh, I go, well, I was going to say, you know, what's funny is I yeah. listened to these, uh, I listen to these like hype up, you know, they get you jacked up videos on YouTube, you know, it's all these mm -hmm. motivational, it's kind of cheesy, but I listen to a lot of them. And, um, you know, one of them, I, one, a quote from one of them that I love is it, um, your dreams usually don't or like your dreams or your goals or, you know, things that really inspire you usually don't come and hit you over the face. Um, they yeah, come at yeah. you from behind. So when you say, you know, in oh. college, I saw this guy and that stayed with you for years. You always mm. had, you know what I mean? And yeah, uh, it's, it's always funny to apply these things that you hear and these motivational things and then, you know, see them actually apply in real life to situations like that. Um, so you start, you know, you get back into it, you know, you're skating and everything. And then what was, um, how did you get in contact with, you know, this community? I didn't, so for me, I like to think that I am pretty in tune with, you know, ath the athletic world, you know, and mm. um, this is something I didn't know existed. You know, so how, how did you come in contact with people that uh, or the, the community, I guess, that that engages in these races and stuff like that? All the skating community. Yeah. Uh, what what had happened was. <laughs> 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 uh, so, you know, I'm I'm going along. I'm, I'm skating in the summers outside on rec skates. And then, you know, right before this, probably the summer before I hit 40. Well, I was 40 at that time. 
So uh, I realized I'm like, you know what? Winter's coming and I want to keep skating, you know, mm -hmm. I want to I want to do something. Those winters so, up there are cold. That's for sure. They are. <laughs> they are. Long. Oh, you got that right. And so uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I got online and I, I started I looked up like inline speed skating indoors, inline skating inside. And I found uh, some teams and uh, one of them was a couple of them were up in Michigan. I'm right on the border. Mm -hmm. So. Um, one was about an hour and a half away and, and one was an hour. And so, and there was nothing in Ohio at the time. Um, the league in Ohio had folded. It's slowly coming back. But so, so I, 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 I contacted this team up in uh, Canton, Canton. My girlfriend teases me because I say Canton. Um, <laughs> it, it, so they have a, a team up there and it's, it's slightly under an hour. And I said, well, this is manageable. The Hall um, of Fame, right? Just, yeah yeah well actually canton michigan canton, oh michigan. canton michigan yeah. gotcha yeah. okay yeah so uh didn't know that existed so there you go <laughs> yep right there so so i went up there i i called them and i i actually I emailed them and said i'm interested in, in skating with you guys and, and at that point i had no aspirations to to race i just wanted to do that for a couple hours you know two three times a week you didn't even know what you were getting getting into. You knew you liked skating, and you knew there was right. a community that did it in the winter. So awesome! Yep. That, so you took the plunge, not knowing, kind of being, you know, uh, you know, free to the idea of, you know, wherever this takes you. You're just along for the ride. You just like the sport. Yep. yep. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I went up there, and I, you know, I didn't know any inline skating is different inside from outside. So inside is the best way to describe it is just like they describe on ice it's nascar on skates mm -hmm. so it's a whole different it's a whole different technique uh indoors turning left um getting your body position right so i i got up there and skated with the beginners for probably a few weeks and it then after that and they said well you know why don't you just skate with the advanced skaters because there's there's at this point there's not the guy said there's nothing else i can teach you so um <laughs> time to level up yeah level up you know x get that get that xp you know that's right <laughs> <laughs> so uh it was chris is the guy that uh was the beginning skating coach and i used like 60 right now so so yeah so i did that and then he's like well you know um we go to races and things you are planning on competing, aren't you? <laughs> oh my God. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, for those of you who you know may be watching and didn't see the the, the art for this episode, um, so like I told you, I met Jay on Twitch. So I didn't know a thing about him, right? I don't know what the hell he looks like. I don't know <laughs> anything. So I I text I actually sent him a whisper that's what the DMs are called on Twitch and I'm like hey uh, can you uh, here's my phone number shoot me a text and uh, you know like give you the info for the show and he, I said can you send me a picture of you maybe skating so um, you know I can kind of promote it or because I use it as the cover art for for each show you know the athlete that I interview honest to God uh, you sent it to me and I went holy shit. <laughs> 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 and I, I brought it over. I, I go, Jenny, look at this guy. And she went, that's not real. That's not what his quads look like. And I said, <laughs> Everyone says that. <laughs> and uh, I was out to dinner with a couple of my friends last night. And uh, I showed him the picture. Same same reaction. Just wait, what? <laughs> so, um, no, it's uh, obviously there is a lot of um, – you know, power that comes, you know, like you said, it's all your core when you're racing. And right. um, that's where a lot right. of the power comes from. But just, uh, I, I don't know. I just thought that was a quick, I just had to let you know that that was when he sent me that picture. I was like, <laughs> okie dokie. <laughs> this guy is well, jacked. All right. It's funny because I don't know if you've run into Big Trouser yet online. He's a, he's a Zwifter and twi he does Twit. You know, he, he broadcasts, but he always has a comment, you know. He's like, yeah, Jay's going to start crushing watermelons with his thighs. <laughs> Just like, or pimp, you know. <laughs> or heads or something, man. Yeah, those things are lethal. <laughs> man, uh, yeah. Well, that um, that's pretty cool, man. That's, um, all right, so keep going on with the racing. So you advance past the, uh, the beginner, and they're like, we want you to race. And you're like, 
wasn't even considering. Oh, real quick, right. we have someone who jumped in the chat, and okay. she's asking, what does a typical – so we have con- – I don't know if you know this, Jay. We have comments running kind of parallel to this. So if people okay. have questions, I'll uh, you know, always want to answer the questions from people watching. So um, what does a typical workout for you look like? That's the uh, question from the- Jenny Lynn. A typical workout, like at a, a speed practice or speed yeah. skating practice? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd assume. So, so, yeah, I'll assume this is at one of our practices. Uh, so, typically what you do, I mean, you get there, you get suited up. Um, usually what we do first is a pace line. <clears throat> so, we're skating in a circle. It's 100 meters around, and it's typically it's at a roller rink. It's your typical local roller rink. Okay. And, um, so... Usually it depends. Anyone, everyone takes a turn doing a few laps. So anyone, anywhere from three to five laps per person. And it's, you always, they always line us up fastest, no, fast to fast to fastest. (laughs) Okay. They never say slow to fast. It's always fast to fastest. fastest. So, (laughs) So typically like the younger ones will be in the front first because the faster the fast people will go slower than the fastest okay and the, so usually it's a lot of the younger kids um and what happens after you take your turn is you drop back and then you get on the back so you're in the back of the draft um and what happens is gradually it picks up it gets a little bit faster and a little bit faster so if you have Sometimes we have, you know, maybe 12 to 15 skaters. And if you're doing like five laps a piece, that's 60 laps. Around. Wow. Yeah. So is it like, um, I know you said you played football and I'm mm-hmm. sure this is an outdated term now, um, but I guess you call it like a Native American run. You know what I'm talking about? Remember when you did those where in football where... Um, oh, Indi- yeah, Indian runs. Indian yeah. runs. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't... You, Obviously, that's an outdated I, name. But, I know but, it's not Pete. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So yeah. is it yeah. similar, but just kind of like a reverse concept? Because it sounds like, because back in those, you'd have to run to the front, right? Where now it's the guy in the front or person in the front when you're skating is going to the back. Is that how it is? Yeah, they go to the back and then they hang on for as long as they can. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So then so, you start with that. And then you said about, what, 60 laps. It wind up, give or take, generally speaking, that's just, how long about yeah and then after that you we do you stretch for a few minutes okay and then you come back on the floor and there's usually another drill after that so early in the season uh we'll do the we'll do the warm-up pace and then stretch and then early in the season we'll do uh technique drills so that could mean uh we'll do maybe small circle drills okay so you what those do is they get you they help you enter the corner so basically going into the turn in a race that's what that's set up to do so it's all about learning to get on the edge of your wheels you'll hear that a lot in skating because your edges where where are all your speed is so it's like uh you, you ever watch those um super bikes i was um, just about to say you, that what yeah. you're the concept you're talking about is when you see those guys on the motorcycle where their knees are like scraping the ground like that's what mm-hmm. i'm picturing like that same concept yep they're on the edges they're on yep. the edge of the wheels you yep. know so it's kind of like that also if you want if you've ever seen olympic speed skating mm-hmm. um how they're so far over like that and they're touching the ground or the ice that's they're on the edge of their blades except on on inlines we are on the um edge of our our wheels and okay. I'll, i have my skate here with me so oh nice you want to be on that edge to your inside edge if you're turning left These so are we do have um i do have a question your about your skates can you hold them up a little bit higher uh we yeah. couldn't see the wheels there so that's the thing that you notice too is look how big that these wheels are and if you're listening if you're listening to just the audio on this um picture a normal roller blade that you see no inline hockey players on or whatever. Um, these are probably what I'd say two times the size per wheel, and yeah. they uh, they go well beyond the toe, and it's behind the heel as well. So it's four pretty big wheels, um, you know, lined up. So we're gonna get to that um, okay. in a little bit, but I don't want to lose track here. So, okay. um, so you did the uh, when I say lose track. I'm just taking in my mind because I'm I'm a dummy and I forget what we're talking about all the time. So I got to keep uh-huh. my mind going. And oh, I understand. 
I so got you. you uh so you work on those uh those techniques um and then what uh then we'll come back and we'll maybe do some uh in the early in the season we'll do some longer conditioning stuff so uh we might do you know maybe something called uh catch the pack um so what that is is like we go around in we go around the rink in a in a pace line and then um someone will will split off the front and they have to go fairly fast and catch the end of the pack or the peloton or yeah what we call it the pace line <laughs> <laughs> so the pace you know if the pace line's moving relatively f- fast not like at a sprint but you know just a nice solid pace it's going to take longer for someone to catch the pack mm-hmm. you know and it can get it can get tiring. <laughs> I imagine. So it's just like say if you're running around a track, and uh, in a in a group, and then the coach says, "All right, Jay, catch the pack." The group stays at their pace. Then you have to run all the way around until you catch the end of everybody else, and then you stay there. That's exhausting. And keep going. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my question. So. I think we got a pretty good idea about your practices. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm exhausted hearing about it. <laughs> yeah, they'll, um, they'll keep your butt real good. <laughs> oh, sounds like it. And if anyone, like, yeah. if anyone has never, you know, really roller skated, um, you know, or inline skated, I mean, for me, my lower back always hurts, you know, because it's just like oh, you're in yeah. a weird position, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's go back to you talking about your coach introducing you to the racing aspect of it. You know, this is where, um, for me, this is where kind of the crux of what this whole, you know, show is about is introducing the world to individuals who have that competitive drive in them, who want to compete, you know, at a high level, as high as they can, you know, later in life, you know, as, as, as high school and college is over, well, what are my options now? And, Um, the idea of you, you know, later in life, picking up your skates, um, kind of looking back and saying, Hey, I I really want to compete in something and, you know, stay active. And then a coach approaches you at one of the practices and says, you know, I want you to compete. Let's go from there. So then what's it like after that? You know, when he's, when he approaches you and says, you know, I want you to compete. Um, what do, what do you say? I mean, obviously you said yes, but <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here's a whole new can of worms, right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, I'll I'll give it a shot. I mean, in this, in sort of the back of my mind, I was thinking I would like to race, you know. Mm-hmm. And the summer before I came in and for indoor, like, I did a I did a half marathon in Chicago on skates, um, the on Chicago skates. inline marathon. Yeah, it's it's a fairly popular one no wait hold on yeah. hold on hold on you just broke my head okay yeah so okay let's let's I pause your that one. <laughs> yeah oh we count so wait you compete okay let's let's take that for a second so there is a thing where you can skate half marathons or is that yeah, just you... a one-off or is there like a circuit of it or what what, what is that uh, uh, they're kind of they're a little bit sporadic uh the two bigger ones are the chicago inline marathon and north shore inline marathon uh the north shore is up in saint paul minnesota yeah duluth i'm sorry duluth minnesota in late september that's a big one so you can you can either skate a half you can skate a whole i think there's some shorter distance ones too what kind of times are we looking at for those like what's uh like let's say for a marathon that you're running right like to qualify for my age group for the boston marathon that's a three hour you know just for a frame of reference to qualify for the Boston marathon, uh-huh. give or take a couple minutes, three hours is typically, you know, what you're shooting for. So what's a typical time for a marathon on skates or a half marathon, do you know? A uh, half marathon, probably you're looking at, I want to say 40 to 45 minutes. Wow. Um, about maybe 40 ish. The pros will do it about that fast or even faster. Um, so if you, you take up, you're talking a marathon, probably under two hours. Wow. Under two hours, yeah, on for the pros, you know. Because if I take the uh, the equivalent of that, so my last half marathon I did an hour and a half, and that's a seven minute mile. So mm-hmm. if um, you're taking half of that, right, for a half marathon, it's 45 minutes, you double the mm-hmm. speed. So you're talking, you're going 14 miles an hour, or I'm sorry, a three minute and 50 second mile. You're cooking. Yeah. 
you're moving pretty good there. Yeah. And when I go out and do my thing here in town, like 14 miles, like I can do that in about 50 minutes. And I'm, and that's like not straight at the same speed because I have to stop for intersections. And right, right, right. Yeah. That's why yeah. I get uh, annoyed riding my bike because I'm like, you get going, you're feeling good. And then you got to stop and wait. It's like, Ugh, come on. <laughs> yeah. You lose your, you lose your rhythm. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, uh, you blew my mind with that. Um, I'm definitely going to look into that. My, I can hear my fiance probably in the other room right now. Like, Oh, for fuck's sake, he's going to do it. He's going to get into another thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're going to be the one to blame. So thank you for that. <laughs> I forgot to mention that one, but <laughs> no, that's, in that's incredible. I didn't know that it existed. So that's really cool. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so going back to the uh, – that's a whole other rabbit hole that I myself am going to go down. So you you inspired me. So I know at least – Also, the there's – if you, you can look up, there's a Berlin one too. There's – I think there's YouTube on that, the whole – some of the entire Berlin inline marathons. How cool. That is yeah. – that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a mind blower right there. So let's talk about you competing again. So um, – coach approaches you what are the next steps now so you're obviously going to be competing with the uh, or you know at least practicing with the advanced people now and mm -hmm. um what's what's the path look like to a competition what's a competition look like let's get into that so yeah so i i start competing uh so one of the first things uh chris says to me is like well you got a trainer <laughs> and it's this is before i think smart trainers are out I said, no, he's like, you might want to get one. So I went and got, you know, a Cyclops magnetic trainer. And it's like, That's what I have. Yep, yep. Yep. They do the job. Yeah, they do. And, uh, uh, psych, you know, a cadence, cadence uh, sensor. And so I, I did that. And that's kind of where cycling kind of started drifting back into my life. Um, so on nights that I didn't have skate practice, I would I would either be on the trainer or doing uh, what we call dry land exercises. Mm -hmm. So that those are just like uh, their form. So you're practicing your skating form uh, in your living room, you know, in your sock feet, um, maybe doing wall sits, things like that. Okay. So I'm doing that during the week. I'm going to skating um, three times a week. And usually, you know, maybe once a month there's, at that time there was a little bit more meat so we go to a meet and uh those i'm in the great lakes uh region so that's ohio michigan indiana illinois and wisconsin so we'd have meets anywhere in those states because you're in toledo so, right yeah i'm in toledo yeah so meets are early af in the morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you i mean the rink will open because they want to get the skating over because they have you know skating Public sessions skates later and in stuff. the day yeah, yeah. make the money so yep, that's right birthday parties or whatever so you get there you it's like ooh, you're like you wake up it's like five you know and you be at the at the rink by six and you're thinking you're sitting in the hotel thinking why and the hell am I doing this? <laughs> yeah. If you're not a morning person. Yep. I, I learned that with triathlon, so I get it. I definitely uh, get it. Brutal. Yeah. So you, depending upon your age group, uh, that's going to determine really what time you need to be there. So so this is or, broken down by age group. Yeah. So it. it's, it, I, when you, there's like tiny tots all the way through Esquire, grand esquire which is like 55 and up so um, between there between the you know the kids and the uh, 55 and up is it broken because i know in triathlon you know in my world it's five year increments is it like yeah, that yeah. with it okay got it so yeah when i started i was a master so that's 40 to 45 and now i'm i am a veteran 45 to 50 okay um well oh. I just said that. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's recorded. So, it's on the internet, baby. It's there to live. <laughs> it, is. it is. So, uh, yeah. So I see uh, the cat rubbing up against your mic there. You want in? You want in? That's Phoenix. You want to interview Phoenix? Phoenix, you a skater? <laughs> he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
and uh at that time too uh there's uh by phoenix there's 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 novice which is beginning and um uh elite they cut the changes now we're called elite if you're uh standard if you're not a beginner so uh the novice will go first all the novice events will go first so when i was a novice yeah i was skating i had to be there at like 6 a.m you know uh racing starts at seven you do three you do three events in your division um we call it skating division so for me as a we'll say i was a master so when i was a master my three races were it started out the middle distance the short distance and the long distance so so the middle distance for me as a master man was 10 laps so that's a thousand meters and it was what distance i'm sorry uh, 10, uh, thousand meters, 500 and 1500. So sh- like sprint mid long. It's like, right, 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 right. Okay. So, gotcha. Mid sprint. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So my, I'd say my best starting was out was probably my middle and sprint distances. And then I think as time has developed, I'm a little bit more of a distance skater mm-hmm. mid to middle. So you do those, um, and each division, like each division does their distance. So, um, for a younger person, their distances are going to be a little bit different. They might run, um, like a 15, like as a mid, maybe they'll still have like a, a short sprint, like a five, and then maybe a longer distance race, maybe a 20 lap race. Okay. Uh, As you get older, they get shorter. So now, um, as a veteran, I have my middle is seven, short is five, still long is 10. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that 15 lap race is like, I'm good until like eight or nine. And then you're just like, holy shit, make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like what happens when you go from half marathon to marathon distance, right? Like you get to like mile 15, you're like, okay. Enough. Enough with this. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. yeah. I've never done. I, I just wanted to do a marathon, but yeah, I've, I've, I've run longer distances and there's, you hit a point where it's just like, oh, Jesus. But that's where you get the, uh, you know, that's where I think the value comes in as an athlete. Right. I mean, it's you get when you get to that wall and push past that wall and get to do stuff that you didn't think was physically possible. Because what you what reminded yeah. when you said um, that you used to do sprint mid, that was kind of your forte. And now you're getting, you know, more comfortable in the endurance stuff Mm -hmm. i used to you know and it's i I feel like your background like you said you were a football player you know like the short Mm -hmm. that mentality of giving dump the energy as much as you can play to play because you know you're going to rest for a while that sprint mentality you know is uh kind of what drew me to you know 5ks and that kind of distance you know beginning but you know as i'm getting older too i start to why not do a half Ironman? Why not do an Ironman? Why not do marathons or endurance? Oh yeah, or, you know ultra runs and stuff like that. So um, that mm-hmm. I, I totally get what you're saying, and and honestly too, as you get older, um, the endurance stuff is kind of more appealing too because as you get older, that's the older people are better at the endurance stuff because oh, yeah. slow twitch muscle fiber, you know, you start to really peak, you know, into your forties where you see a lot of these guys in Ironman competitions who are winning it are in their forties, you know, some of the best in the world are that age. So, um, mm-hmm. it makes sense that, you know, that uh, you kind of made that transition too, but, um, yeah, the beautiful thing about it. You can transition into a sport like this and still, you still got life left, you know, a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Jay, this is why, like, this is exactly why I want, as soon as I heard what you did, I was just like, boom, I got to talk to this guy because you, you're inspiring me. Like I, my fiance is going to kill me. She's going to be so angry because I'm going to want to do this. <laughs> um, but um, so, okay. So you get there, you know, depending on what race you're doing on race day, um, mm-hmm. regardless of, you know, where you're at, uh, you still got to get there pretty early and yeah. uh, there's the different distances. Now, let me ask you this. What with like, how many people are in a race and how do you do you oh. have to qualify for, you know, get, can anyone just sign up to do a race or do you have to hit like pre-qualifications? Cause obviously there's a finite number of space in a rink. Um, right. So how do you get there? You know, how, obviously you would a coach that, you know, kind of advised you, Hey, but um, 
so yeah, kind of get to shed some light on, uh, you know, like kind of that whole you know, aspect of it. Yeah, uh, pretty much anyone can can sign up. I mean, you have to have a uh, amateur card through the governing body, USA Roller Sports. But I mean, that's easy to do. Um, Is it so, you just like a, you pay for it? And they, you know, like with triathlon, you have to have a USA triathlon membership in order to race mm-hmm. and everything. So is that pretty much what it's like with the, with the, what did you say? USA, what's it called? Yeah. USA roller sports. Do you, um, and in the show notes after this, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to put Jay's, um, you know, social media stuff in here, but I'm also going to put some links for, um, if you're looking to get involved in this sport. Um, so Jay, shoot me over after this is done. Um, shoot okay. me over the website for you okay. know, where it, if you wanted to sign up to kind of get started and uh, i'll put that in the show notes after the show as well okay yeah people can uh probably go to usa roller sports and look at what region they're in and see what um teams are in that region you better believe i'll be doing that right after this so <laughs> yeah. yeah so when you get to a meet uh usually you know there's they they uh they warm up each each age group by you know by age so, so they'll call it tiny tots come out to the floor for take your warm-ups for three minutes then they're done then there's music playing there's a dj and everything it's kind of it's kind of fun that's cool so they they go through all the warm-ups and then the races start um as far as like people in a particular race up to there's up to six people on we say it's on the line meaning six people in the race or people on the starting line okay so uh what happens before you get on the starting line is they'll call you up. They'll say, uh, you know, veteran men, please go check in for your 500 meter. So um, you go over to the, the check in um, and you, they have your name down there and you have a, a I didn't bring it upstairs with me. You have a, a, a helmet cover mm-hmm. um, and you, you show them your helmet cover like I, like Jay and Thomas 758. I got you. So then you go and you sit in these chairs that are on the wall, on the floor, you know, and you wait, you wait for the other uh, age groups to race and then they call you up. But before that happens, you draw a number and that number is for your spot on the starting line. So um, if there's six of you, there's six numbers, um, the guy, sometimes it's bingo numbers. So he's shaking the little bottle and he pours them out and he, he says, open your hand and he pours one out and that's your number. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, this is still amateur, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you'll either get, you'll either get the pylon, which is the innermost uh, spot on the starting line. And that's, that's a good spot to be, or you'll get the wall. You'll be right on the wall, which is, it's a little bit of a difficult s- space to start in running down the floor in skates it's like horse racing right i mean it's you never want you never want to be that outside guy because that's the longest way to get to the the Mm -hmm. you know the pack so uh i mean any any circular sport like that nascar and all that kind of stuff yeah crit racing Mm -hmm. yep so uh so you do that and uh you know call you up and then you know there you go you're on the starting line and they have the little the gun now if you if you fall i think it's like any other sport like this if you if you fall start and then you the first time you got to uh you got to start four feet back from everybody else so they'll call you back and then the the ref will tap you on the back and say hey yo bro you got to stand back (laughs) get back loser (laughs) yeah but then it's you know but Sometimes you can make that up. I, I rarely fall start, but sometimes it happens. But you you get jumpy because you want oh, yeah. that advantage, yeah. you know. And it's the the just the adrenaline of sitting there, you know, looking down straight ahead, looking at the other people. I mean, that's that moment is. I used to think because I, I was a swimmer, and that moment when you're on the blocks and you oh, just yeah. kind of hear the noise leave the room that split, you know, that, mm-hmm. you know, second or two that you're waiting for that gun to go off or whatever the bell or whatever, you know, indicates the beginning of the race. That moment yeah. is so intense that I think a lot of us as athletes growing up are always kind of chasing that dragon, you know, are always trying to find that again. And I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I obviously can't speak for you, but I mean, it sounds like, you know, when your coach asked you to race again, 
you were you were kind of a lost puppy for a little bit you know like I, yeah i gotta i gotta exercise i gotta get this beast out of me but you know just running on a treadmill reading a book like you said ain't gonna do it you know so then you kind of went down the path of competition and i think that's in all of us as athletes mm-hmm. that have competed at levels you know growing up um Oh, so yeah. when you talk yeah. about like the pole position, you know, on the wall, so, you know, you pull that, you pull that in between, like how many, and, and I'm sure there, there's a disparity between, you know, race to race, but generally speaking, mm-hmm. like how many do you think would you say are in a race um, at a, a given event that you go to? Oh, how many people there? Yeah. Uh, how many entries? Um, I'd say anywhere from maybe 80 to 120. Um, and that's in a single that's race. Un- well, not in a single race, like oh, entries in a, in a, in a, um, at a meet, but at a single gotcha, race yeah. on average, like there's a lot more younger kids than there are older people. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's just me and someone else in my division, in my age group. Just That's got to be pretty intense. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a drag race pretty much. But, That's awesome. But some, lately, the last couple of times I raced, there was three of us um and the the thing with like the speed skating community is it's pretty close knit Mm -hmm. so whether you're at nationals or regionals or local like you you know people Mm -hmm. because over the years like you just you keep seeing each other and you race against each other all the time so the cool thing about it is you know it's kind of like you know switch twitch (laughs) (laughs) we we all know each other so we're always like giving each other pointers and and hanging out in the chat or whatnot so you uh you piqued my interest again now even more um when you said there's a for those watching there's a bug that keeps flying into my face that's why i'm smacking my head a lot but uh, (laughs) (laughs) it's one of those damn fruit flies but anyways um so you said nationals so Mm -hmm. um you're you're really painting a great picture here so you're in college Mm -hmm. this guy flies by on, on skates and you're like, what the hell is that? And that sits in your brain for, let's say, what, 10, 15 years. Oh, well, yeah, about 10 years. <laughs> there you go. So then you start thinking, how am I going to, you know, I, maybe I'll pick this up again. And then, you know, you, you, you do a little research, find out there's, there's skates. You know, you drive an hour to go to these practices. All of a sudden, you start mm-hmm. getting better at it. Coach hits you up. Hey, I want you to compete. You know, you should go to the advanced people. Now you're talking about. You know, you just kind of drop that info. You're like, yeah, you see the same people at Nationals. So I'm assuming you've been to Nationals. Yeah, yeah, I've been to Nationals. So there you uh, go. Times. So how do you and, get to Nationals? What's a path look like for someone who is just starting out to you know follow mm-hmm. kind of the same path that you've been to? What are the qualifying characteristics? Like, what do you have to do to get there? For So to get to Nationals, you have to qualify at your regional meet. And... Um, now, if it weren't for COVID, regionals were supposed to be at my home rink in Canton. Oh, Michigan. that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. So rinks, they take turns hosting regionals. Um, so basically what you have to do to qualify, you have to place first, second, or third in your races, um, whatever they are in your division. Okay. Um, you can also qualify for a relay. Um Two Re- relays are crazy. They're fun. So there's a multiple ways, a multitude of ways you can you can um, qualify. So if you're like for me, it's been relatively easy because when, as you when you're older, like there's you don't have a lot of people um, that are competing in your division. So um, it's not it's not terribly hard. Now when you get to nationals, that's where like the heat comes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's where people are just wicked fast. But so at nationals, in at nationals, is it um, is it in the same spot every year, or is it um, you know does it change on an annual basis? How does that work? Yeah, it's for the most part, it's 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 been in the same spot, but it sometimes it changes. Like last year, it was in uh, Spokane, Washington. Okay. Uh, one, two years in a row, it was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, and let me tell you, that was, that was hard for me because the altitude there. Um, so I would do maybe I go out warm up. I do, let me do, let me do a couple fast laps. And by the end of the first fast lap, I was like 
sucking air. <laughs> oh man. I bet. I bet. That's uh you forget about that, you know, the altitude because I know a lot of triathletes live out west in those areas. Um what's the big one? I think Flagstaff's another big one where a lot of endurance athletes live because you can you can live not at altitude, but you have the ability to train at altitude and then there's that whole argument about is it better to live at altitude and train there as well, or is it better to live but either way, yes, it's a super yeah. challenge to, to, to do that. Yeah, it was it was it was tough. I did good there, but um, it was it was hard. So, so what's good? Yeah, like, what what do you mean you did good there? Let's hear. It. So, yeah, Albuquerque. I did. Uh, I was a master then, so I had a, a fifteen, a seven, and a five. So, I got. I was that was skating novice division then. So, and we say fifteen, seven, five. That's the distances, right? Distances. Yeah. yeah okay. So at my best place there was like a I was a third in the. Um, in the uh, middle distance, the seven lap. At nationals. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. That's that's freaking awesome. Yeah. That was hard fought too. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> One guy went down in front of me. It's like, and when that happens, like you, you have to make really fast decisions on what you're gonna do in skating. Like if someone goes down, um, if you want to move up a spot during the race it's everything is like so close together so say like you want to you want to make a pass you know you have to plan that thing out like a half a lap or a lap before but you'll you'll see it because you'll say oh I, you know what i think i got this guy i think i got this guy so you're coming into the turn you want to back off a little bit and then coming out of the turn by the middle of that straightaway you want to be going past whoever it is you want to you want to pass it's got to be pretty intense because you know one yeah. false move you're on the ground right you you know you might lock you might kick someone's skate you know yeah but that's what that's what makes it exciting to be in and it's also very exciting to watch so we have another question from a uh a viewer here um have you ever crashed speaking of crashing oh, he- <laughs> yeah i've got some floor burns <laughs> yeah i bet you're not sliding like on ice you know you are <laughs> you know what's funny it, about that is like the coating on the floor is called roll on okay it's a it's, it's a plastic kind of coating so it, a lot of times it's fresh like at nationals and regionals they they make sure the floor has a good roll on it so when someone falls you hear that that skin screech oh. you hear this collective oh <laughs> <laughs> i just did it i didn't even hear it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Now, yeah, when the floor the, is like oh, old and it's wore out, you'll kind of slide. But when it's fresh, you'll just come to a stop. Because like, <laughs> <laughs> that roll, because they want your wheels to stick. I mean, you when you're on the edge like that, you know, and it's I, I, yeah. it definitely makes sense that they would do that. Um, yep, you want that. But so yeah, nationals. So you go to nationals yeah. and you compete there. Is there any type of event after that? Like, is there a world or anything like that? Where any international competition mm-hmm. that you can go with that? Uh, yeah, there is. And worlds is for usually the, the younger skaters and they have to qualify. I, I forget how they qualify. Um, I think they have to qualify at, at nationals or, uh, or there's, there's tri- actually, I think there's tryouts for that. So uh, the, the world team is sponsored by the governing body, um, USARS, um, in the United States. So it's kind of a big deal. It's and it, it changes every year where where the world's competition is. Okay. It's very uh, it's highly competitive. I can imagine. You can go online and look up like world inline skating speed championships, and there's youtubes of lots of different events on there yeah just shoot me a link when shoot me along with the the governing body just shoot me that website okay. too and then i'll put it in the show notes for everybody afterwards so they can check it okay. out if they're interested um so the the other you know and i always like to to come at this kind of aspect of things as well so i mean you're on the bike you know you're cross training you're doing the dry land stuff you know you're going to these meets you're working your ass off you're going to nationals mm-hmm. doing all this really cool stuff um, mm-hmm. but you know, this isn't your full-time job. This is, right. you know, rich. so let's talk <laughs> about how, well, what do you do? You know, what, what do you do outside of skating? How do you fit all of oh. this in? You know, what's a typical week of training, you know, look like. So my day job, I work for a Medicaid insurance company called Buckeye health plan. Um, I'm a behavioral case manager 
Uh, so basically my job is to help people on the mental health side stay connected with services so they don't go back to the psych unit time again or go in inpatient for something medical lots of times. Um, my background, my college, my graduate degree is in rehabilitation counseling and I'm, I'm a licensed counselor. Um, Pretty rewarding work, it sounds like. State of Ohio, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so training wise, you know, maybe yeah, I work eight to five, I'll get off. Um, so if it's like Monday, like nowadays, like I will, I have a drum, I'm a musician too. So I, I Jeez. still study. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> what do you play? I'm a drummer. I play drums. And on top of this folks, right as we jumped on the podcast, he, he mentions that he also has his own show as well. So the yeah. inline speed skater. <laughs> musician i do too you much. have your own show <laughs> you're working uh you know you're working your eight to five like this is incredible and this is exactly yeah. the kind of these are exactly the kind of people that i want to talk to you know as the show goes on so um that's amazing so you're working eight to five jesus so yeah. if you're doing so much stuff do you have specific you know days or times that you know like for me i know when i a sunday night activity for me is I, mm -hmm. I make a calendar, you know, Monday through Friday, an hour by hour, and I put it on the fridge of exactly oh. what I'll be doing every hour of the rest of the week. Okay. Um, for you, do you have any kind of set training schedule or set schedule like you know, Wednesday night is dedicated to music after work, and or Tuesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, or I'm gonna cycle, or you know, I'm gonna cycle, and Monday, Friday are my blade days, or what? You know what I mean? Like what? How does that usually work? <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I'm not quite that organized, but I have sort of a rough idea of what I do. So Monday, you know, after the drum lesson's over, like I'll either get a ride in or I'll skate. So I have my stuff in the car with me to go straight to whatever I'm doing. Um, Tuesday, uh, when it's not COVID stuff, um, Tuesday evening, I go to work. Then I drive an hour up to Canton and I have skate practice from 6.45 to 8.30. Um, come home late, eat, go to bed. So then Wednesdays are usually another, it's an off, it's a day where I don't, I'm not at practice. So uh, that's either a ride or a skate. Um, in the summer, it's usually, it's a group ride here in town. Um, so, I, I, and it's usually, it ends up being pretty dog, doggone fast. <laughs> so I'm like, cause you know, some people, some strong people show up. So I'm hanging on for dear life for 26 miles. Well, I saw on your fast. Instagram, uh, yeah. wait, did you, wait, what'd you just say? 26 miles. Yeah. It's about 26 miles. That group ride is, I mean, it's a marathon. So they, holy cow. That's wow. It's a lot of skating. So now that, you know, COVID's around, there's no speed practice. Right. Tuesday night is a group ride too, and that's 28 miles. But that's it's a little bit more mild than the Wednesday night one. Because so. I saw on your Instagram, because um, I, when I asked you for your um, handle earlier today, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was scrolling through it, and you got some pretty cool videos up there about you know like you practicing, and one of them was a line that I saw that you must have been recording while you were skating, like. Wow, oh yeah, that's some, pretty damn some impressive. Buddies, <laughs> some buddies of mine came down and uh, we went. We did an outdoor skate together. We d we did a pace line on the trail. So. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah. you've been doing it for you now from start to finish, from the time that you got into it to the time that you know, however old you are now, what forty eight? You said. How mm -hmm. long has it been? You've been doing it for about what ten years now, a little over ish. With everything, so. Yeah. 13 maybe because i did it a few a few years before i even started racing so i was just outside learning the technique mm -hmm. sitting in the parking lot at u of toledo with headphones and just and youtube videos like watching i went okay let me try this thing let me try that and then i would go skate you know 10 or 12 miles i always that. say why the hell did we go to school you know youtube man anything you want to learn it's just on youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah yeah so That's i have a friend. question for you too the um you know the we were out to dinner last night talking about you like i said we were excited to hear from you and one of the questions that we had um <laughs> so I, sh I i told you i showed them the pic and everyone's like damn look at his quads but the other thing that we looked at were we kind of zoomed in on your skates and we noticed oh, yeah. that you have four wheels and then mm -hmm. the, and specifically the picture that you sent me, there's a girl, I think, in the background that has three wheels. So okay. is there a difference between 
the the wheel sizes or is there a specific uh -huh. kind of skate that you look for that's one better than the other or is there a tech you know oh, an yeah. advantage of having less wheels or you know what i mean so um i guess it's a real general question but like what do you when you're building your skate you know what are you looking for so the what i skate on is is four by one tens so my wheels are 110 millimeters around uh about 2014 they came out with the three wheel skates which are 125s so they're it's even bigger you know yeah they're huge uh the advantage of the the bigger wheels is they we call it roll they roll they have more roll so uh they're, they're gonna go slightly faster on those bigger wheels but the problem is indoors when you're on those turns they're hard to turn over. Like it's hard to move. It's harder to move those wheels quickly when you're, when you're crossing over, you know, right over left, right over left, right over left into the turn. But if you are outdoor skating, like in a straight line, like they are much more advantageous. So, okay. That's interesting. Is there any kind of outdoor competition that's similar to this? I mean, aside from, you know, like the, like a marathon, obviously there's not a lot of sharp turns that you're going to be taking, you know, right. but, um, you know, if you're inside, so is there any type of like circular speed skating competitions that are outside that, um, um or no, there, there are, uh, there's a lot more like internationally. Um, but there are like here, there's, uh, outdoor nationals in Colorado Springs and that's on, a, it's on a, it's on a track. It's on a banked track. Of course, Colorado Springs, right? It's where yeah. that's where the Olympic uh, facilities mm -hmm. are, right? There's also there's also a bank track in Florida somewhere. Um, and I think that's it. There's maybe two or three in the U.S. and that's all. Uh, if you look at Colombian inline speed skating, like their government has totally put a lot of money into it, so it's highly competitive down there. Really? Uh, yeah, very much so. That's interesting. It seems like such a random country to just be into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you think I got quads? You check out those guys down there. It's like sick. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will check that out. <laughs> now yeah. that uh, now that you yeah. said that, so mm -hmm. the um, so when you talk about um, you know equipment, um, mm -hmm. where would you if you were interested in getting into the sport? Is there you know it's like an authority on this? You know, is there like a website that is kind of like generally understood to be where you go to get your stuff, or is there like a or would you go to like a local hockey, you know, outlet in your area or wh where would you go to pick up a, a pair of like speed skating inline skates? Uh, speed lighting in, you can go to, uh, you can go to inline warehouse, um, dot com. You can get a, um, get a decent stock boot, like a, a package, which means like you get the, get your boot, get your frame and wheels and bearings, like all in one. Okay. Or, uh what i eventually when i got into it um with the team like i wanted to upgrade so i got my skates through the rink the rink owner um who was also on the team long history of competing and skating and stuff so she was able to tell me uh get me you know deals and told me like advise me like what kind of boot i might like um to get into uh, wheels and bearings and stuff like that so uh, probably a good place to start if you don't know anything at all. I would say go to like inlinewarehouse.com. Um, um, sometimes you can pick up some used skates online on eBay. Um, you know, maybe someone's left the sport. Uh, they want to get rid of their, their gear. That's mm -hmm. a good way um, to do that. I've sold a couple pair on um, through eBay. Did you autograph them before you sold them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, speed skating is just, it's like, it's a hidden secret, you know, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, no, I mean, you've, you've opened yeah. my eyes to this. I mean, this is, this is pretty, pretty freaking crazy about the, yeah. and this is my problem is I want to do everything. So, um, oh, the yeah. idea oh, of yeah. like just training, I love the idea of training for something and then being able to compete at it at, Oh yeah, because that's what it, that's what drew me to the sport of triathlon was, you know, it, I kind of followed the same path that you did, where I, you know, I people are sick of hearing the story, so I'll give you the the, the uh, book. What's it called? The Cliff Note version of it. But basically, <laughs> I, I always hated running. I was a football player. I played semi professional football in my twenties, and I played professional indoor football, mm -hmm. and 
I knew I couldn't do it forever, you know. So uh, I got into uh, 5Ks through a work race that we had. And I, I did my first one. And I remember saying I'm never doing this again because, you know, 5K seemed like a million miles to me at the time. And um, oh, yeah. just wasn't in shape, you know what I mean, to do endurance type stuff. <laughs> but then I started thinking, I'm like, I you know went down the rabbit hole. You can do this forever. You know, there's – I see 60, 70, 80-year-old people running races. I'm like, this is cool. And then you start thinking, well, if I did this differently or if I trained a little bit harder, I bet mm-hmm. – and then it's just that slippery slope of – it becomes like an addiction for me where it's like, I love competing. Oh, I love shooting for that oh, next yeah. thing. And you know, like I, I can see you smiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't stop. It's just like, yep. I got to go out and train. I got to, I got to do something, you know? <laughs> yep. So I actually, um, I have a question for you in a second, but someone just asked, uh, this Jenny Lynn, she is super active here. Um, <laughs> she okay. said, are there different skates that you have for practice versus competing? No, I use the same skates for uh, competition and uh, and in practice. Every just about everybody does that. Now, some people have outdoor skates and they have their indoor skates. Um, but I mean, I use mine for everything. So, so I'll kind of piggyback off of that too. Um, I t- I told you I'm from Buffalo, New York, and you know hockey is king there. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I grew up playing. <laughs> And uh, yeah. I used to play, um, you know, hockey. I mean, I I used to get the one summer. I remember I got second degree burns on my back from playing hockey all day, every day from with my shirt off. You know, just we played hockey nonstop. And I remember we'd have to change our wheels out quite a bit because we were hockey oh, stopping yeah. on concrete. You know, um, mm. for you, how often, you know, maintaining your your wheels um, do you have to oh, yeah. uh, lubricate the the axles, and do you have how often do you have to change the wheels? Like, what's maintenance look like on a rollerblade like that or a skate? Oh man, so like outdoors, uh, probably you're gonna change them pretty quickly. Now I've had these for these are my outdoor wheels. Um, I've had these for a couple of years, and they're getting pretty chewed up because they have different hardness, right? That's what you're, yeah. Uh, and so, what kind of hardness are you looking for in an outdoor wheel compared to an indoor wheel? Outdoor wheels are going to be a little bit softer than your indoor wheels because of the asphalt. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of absorb some of the um, that that um, graininess of the asphalt. Okay. So, and actually, it's these the outer wheels are softer than the inner wheels. Um, and I put the softer ones on for more grip. Um, so your softer wheels are going to grip harder, and your harder wheels are going to give you more resi- less you know they're going to give you better rolling resistance gotcha yeah gotcha. so these i actually i just ordered a, a new set of uh outdoor wheels um and they're 2250 a wheel so i paid 180 for eight eight wheels yeah <laughs> well when you're an amateur athlete you're basically just working to fund your sport right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's and, uh and, that's the life of an amateur athlete <laughs> yeah and, and, and you know of course your, you know, your bearings are going to get dirty a little bit quicker outside, but mm-hmm. those have pretty good shields on them. So they, unless I get caught in the rain, I don't really, I don't mess with taking the bearings out. Or you go off road or hit the butt or something like that. Mm-hmm. Now, Still- indoor wheels are, are a little bit different. I forgot to bring some upstairs, but um, they're going to, your indoor wheels are going to be harder because you're, you know, you're on a wood surface, you're on a consistently hard thing to skate on so um and th- there's like two companies there's like two or three like matter is one of them and um what's the other one uh honey badger <laughs> i know the great names that is a great but... name. I like that. <laughs> so you know you're gonna get a different rolling resistance from company to company and um usually what happens is a company will come out with a good one and like almost everybody will be on those wheels. Everyone, because you're always looking for that competitive advantage, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and those are, those are, you know, they're expensive too. So during a, an indoor season, you might, you might go through maybe one or two sets of wheels. Like you'll have your practice wheels and then you have your race wheels that you only wear at races. You know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And then after a while, your race wheels will become your practice wheels, and then you'll get another set of competition wheels. Gotcha. Well, that's how my bike is. Uh, okay. Same thing. You know, I have my race mm-hmm. wheels, and I have. <laughs> sounds funny to say, but I have my training wheels too. You know, so training, oh, when, yeah. I, <laughs> when I'm indoors, I'm riding yeah. training wheels, and 
you know, you got your outdoor wheels and stuff. So it makes mm-hmm. sense. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of the same concept. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask you too is, you know, for me, you know, me and my fiance planned uh, the world championships were in August for triathlon. We were going to go there and, mm-hmm. you know, for, for, well, for actually, first of all, um, you may have mentioned this and I apologize. What is the, what's a typical season, you know, from, um, you know, kind of when races start to kind of happen to the national championship, mm-hmm. when, what's, what are the months that that usually happens in? Oh man. So usually, uh, nationals would actually be, if it was going to go, it was probably be starting in a week. Okay. Um, so once that's over, you know, things usually kick up again. We start practicing again, probably like late September. Okay. So it's like a winter activity and then, well, it's a long season actually. I mean, you oh, got, yeah. yeah. Over to July. Yeah. It's very long. <laughs> that is a, that is a long season. I thought it's very long. I'm a bowler yeah. and our, our seasons are 32 weeks and uh, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. So uh, you um, wouldn't do it if you didn't love it though. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's, you can, it's interesting, you know, it's in, the, in the winter you're driving up to practice in the dark and coming home in the dark. <laughs> yeah, those uh, those winters up north are very long and depressing. I, I can feel you on those. In Texas, they're very yeah. different. <laughs> so yeah. the uh, so the other question I had for you too is then you know how so with everything being canceled, you know we're we're all facing as athletes, especially mm-hmm. at the amateur level, where we're not getting paid. You know, we're not feeling the pressure from sponsors and all that kinds of stuff. Um, we don't have the, uh, ability to live in bubbles to compete, right? Like the, uh, like the NBA and, you know, the baseball teams do have, but, um, right. do right. you, how do you find the motivation to train right now since nationals oh. have been canceled and all these meets that you usually are accustomed to for years now you've been going to are canceled? What, what motivates you? What keeps you going every morning when you wake up, you're oh. like, I got to do this. I think it's just that fact that I, that I just like want to keep excelling. Like I want to keep getting better. You know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me so much that the things are canceled. It's just like, all right, I got to keep moving forward. I like I have to train. I want to keep like, you know, even on like the bike or the group rides, like how do I how do I keep getting faster when I go out and skate? It's like it's that addiction to like the technique and and, like and practicing and feeling those 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 sweet spots when Mm -hmm. I get when I'm when I move my body the right way or uh my endurance or my um heart rate you know Mm -hmm. no that Um, makes sense my speed it's like okay i'm gonna do this half mile interval um i want it to go this x fast you know i want Mm -hmm. i want to get this aspect of my technique done i want to feel that power coming down through my butt Mm -hmm. like working perfectly with the skate you know like Mm -hmm. this this synergy of uh um, coordination between the limbs and the wheels, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was talking to, uh, <laughs> talking to, <laughs> well, I was talking to my buddy yesterday. Weird. Yeah. Well, I was telling my buddy yesterday who I was talking to. So he's the national aqua bike. So he's the age group national champion for aqua bike. I don't know if you know what aqua bike is. It's, uh, you oh, no swim and bike. So it's a triathlon minus the running part. So, oh, okay. It's like a duathlon, but just a different way, different two sports, you know. So, okay. um, anyways, we were talking yesterday and about how do you stay motivated? Now, I always like that question, especially now because mm-hmm. it's just there's no, and you know, I we kind of came to the agreement, and you may agree or disagree with me, but I think there's one of two paths people are taking. You know, I don't think people are kind of doing business as usual right now i think people are either using Mm -hmm. this break as a way to recharge take a break um and like hey there's nothing you know on the immediate horizon so i might as well just take this time to kind of regroup i think there's Mm -hmm. other people that are doubling down and saying this is my chance to really focus on form technique strength the weaknesses in my game and that's the kind of the way that i've approached my training um, and it sounds like you're kind of doing the same thing too, is you're really focusing on, you know, I, I know eventually this is going to come back and when it comes back, I want to hit the ground running, you know, as, fa- as, as best as I oh, can, yeah. you know? So, um, mm-hmm. is that, yeah. is that kind of your mindset too, or are you using the, you know, kind of explain that a little bit? Yeah. Some of it's a little bit of a break. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, like, you know, I love to skate and I like 
skating with other people, but you know, driving back and forth an hour to practice was it was it was getting kind of getting oh yeah. Peaceful. And but, you're doing a million different things too, so it's not like you're yeah. just doing that, you know. So it's been a it's been a little bit of a breather, but at the same time, I'm thinking like I got to keep going because if I don't, then so and so is going to beat me. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I'll tell you what. So I want to give a shout out to my boy Danny. So uh, I just I met this guy about maybe a month and a half ago. And he, I met him at my pool and the story has a, has a reason here, Jay. So stick with me. But, um, gotcha. his, uh, so this dude, you could tell, like, as we talked, like, like me and you, Jay, we got a lot in common and we've mm-hmm. never spoken before. Um, so with Danny, we had a lot in common as well. And my third, um, on my bowling team, my third person, uh, actually had to drop out. So for the season, so now we have this vacant spot. And I uh, asked Danny, I'm like, hey, man, I mean, you seem like a competitive guy and you play sports. Like, would you want to would you want to, you know, maybe join our bowling league? And he's like, oh, come try it out. See what it's about. And I taught him. um, I taught him how to spot bowl, you know, using the arrows and, you know, the correct steps to take and line up Uh and the whole, you know, well, this son of a bitch beat me. <laughs> <laughs> and he bowled before. <laughs> and uh, no, he never did. He never, uh, you know. And he he goes, I didn't even notice that there, there were arrows on the lane. So I've noticed that. And so he's like, but he he lit it up. So you know, I my average is a one sixty one. Oh my god! So he my average is a one sixty one. It's not great, but he so his average because of that one week as a 163. So my fiance told me uh, last week at bowling, she goes, uh, look, and just innocently, just like she goes, oh, look, Danny has a higher average than you. Well, <laughs> and so this is where it loops back around when you go that competitive <laughs> missing you. I wound up bowling a, I bowled a 224 that night because I'm like, screw Danny, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that bristled your feathers, man. Yeah. I'm like, Danny's coming for me, yeah. man. I, I, I got to get better uh, at bowling here. So um, that's, that's the same on my team because it's like there's a he's and he's older than me. But years ago, like he, he had skated, then had kids and then stopped. And now the last couple of years, he's been coming back. But now he's like starting to like beat me in races and i'm hell i'm pissed off about that <laughs> yeah yeah and it's a good pissed off though you know it's 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 iron sharpens yeah. iron right i mean that's that's kind of the mentality that that i i think right. that too much of us who are former athletes or have that competitive drive in us don't mm-hmm. don't have a way of getting that out of our systems as we get older and that right. you know really right. is you know that's that's really why I started this whole podcast and the show mm-hmm. is because I want to provide opportunities for people who may not have even considered competing now start to open their minds and like hey I know how to skate I have a pair of skates at home I can go to oh, nationals yeah. for this and then you start to kind of just kind of go down mm-hmm. that that path you know and kind of you know mm-hmm. use that mentality to just you know one day at a time just take steps in a direction where you start to release that because I think. Um, People like you are super inspiring. I really do. When you get into something later in life like that, and you compete at the highest levels that you possibly can at that amateur ranks um, and semi, excuse me, semi pro ranks, I think that's a super. Yeah. You have a super inspiring story. So uh, I've always, I've always like taken notice. It's always kind of been like a, a inspiring or a turn on when people are older, they like late bloomers. Mm-hmm. I always felt like I kind of came late into a lot of things. So um, it's really interesting. Uh, it's a great mentality to have, man. It really is. It's yeah. uh, inspiring stuff. So I'll tell you what, we've been doing this for over an hour. Uh, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah, it's gone by so, fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you. The, um, I, I, I really, you know, for those listening and watching, um, I told uh, I told Jay you know, the, when we were twitching, um, I said, listen, I don't want to hear any more about this because I want this to be organic. You know, I want to meet you for the first time on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I don't have any questions prepared or anything like that. I just want to have a conversation and I found yeah. out a lot of really cool stuff about you, man. And it's inspiring stuff. So, um, after this, I'm going to put all the show notes or in the show notes, I'll put all the, uh, the links that you're going to send me here. Um, I'll text okay. you, you know, of what I'm looking for, but, um, anything else you'd want to add to anyone thinking about getting into this sport or just anything that we didn't go cover that you think you'd, you know, you want to put out there. 
I would say, yeah, it's just just do it and have fun with it if you're interested in it. Um, and also, there's one other uh, resource uh, interesting to watch: National Speed Skating Circuit, the NSC. It's very interesting to watch. It's sort of like the pro circuit. Um, one of the Olympic speed skaters, I think, had a hand in setting it up. Um, that's on. He went from inline to ice. Uh, Joey Mantia, I think, is the guy that helped set it up. So uh, I can put that in the in the links too. There's a yeah, it's, it's cool. Don't. There's cool races to watch on there. Very exciting. <laughs> oh, I bet, I bet, and uh, it's got to get pretty intense to see these guys just and girls just cranking it out. And um, mm -hmm. there's a lot lots of stake. Of, you know, yeah, lots of lots of good ladies out there too doing it. So yeah, I, well, you said your coach or not your coach, the person who runs the rink, right? Your home rink is. Uh, yeah, she's a former national champion, and her son was on the world team, and her husband was on the world team on roller skates. So this has sort of evolved from roller skating for years and years, and then inlines came and sort of took over. So it, there's a very rich history. That is really cool. Yeah. That is really cool. Well, you know, listen, Jay, I really appreciate your time. You know, thanks. I know it's Sunday, and uh, I think you're going to inspire a lot of people out there uh, who listen to this. So. Uh, I hope really. So. Oh yeah, you definitely <laughs> will, man. So yeah. I was, I, I it was really nice getting to chat with you, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, connecting with you more, you know, on Twitch and okay. just staying in touch and following your story, man. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, like I said, all those, all the links that we talked about and everything are going to be in the show notes. So uh, have an awesome rest of your day. All right. Peace out. All right. See you, Jay. <laughs> All right.